Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm catching crawfish with my good friend Captain Ronnie Adams from the TV show Swamp People. We'll be checking his traps, and then I'm going to show my favorite simple way to boil these tasty mud bugs. Let's get it started. Oh, we're heading back to my little honey hole, Buck. We're going to get on these crawdads, Buck. Catching about a sack, sack and a half a day. The golden ticket here, crawfish bait. We're going to have a good old time, and then we're going to fill our bellies at the end of the day, baby. I'm excited, just like any typical person from South Louisiana. I love my crawfish. I hope he don't work me too hard, though. We got the first at three, six, nine, eleven, eleven. Eleven on the first go round. Not bad, but it ain't great. So every time you pick up, you got a rebate. Yep. And I use that uh, block that, that I'm telling y'all, if y'all can find that it's hard to come across, but this block bait, them crawfish love it. You can't use it for nets because ain't nothing to hook it to. But if you got traps, any type of trap, you put that block bait in there, boy, that sucker works. And I also keep one pole in there and each one just to hold them in there. You know, once they get into the trap. Because if not, they'll crawl out. I mean, look at all the babies. When you pull out, it's full of babies. So that's future. In two weeks, that'll be eating size. So I kind of just get in here and I want to keep that trap out the water. These hyacinths took over the canals down here. And, they, and you don't pump them out and that, and the water, we ain't been getting no good hard wind and that to push them out of here. So you literally got to dig in and dig your little hole to put your trap, but you got to be careful because it's loaded with snakes. I mean, you loaded with snakes. And this is kind of how I do it. Right there. Old crawfish ball waiting to happen. So like, we've done a few different types of trapping. We set pig traps, set out crab traps, but I don't know that I've ever been so excited to check traps. Whew. Look at that, my baby. Loaded. And it's just gonna get better. Once the, once the cool gets out of here, they cook, that little cold front last week put a damper on them. But boy, once it starts heating up, they're gonna pick up, boy. I'm like a kid right now. I just can't. <laughs> it's too fun. <laughs> There's two traps we checked, and we all like just giddy. It's awesome. Come on, big boy, get out of there. There we go. So each trap has an opening, what, at the top, right? Yep, for your bait. Bait goes in here. And, and empty in it. Let's show them the bottom. Let's so you, uh, close it up once that so they don't crawl out, but in the bottom it's got two funnels. Now you can get these traps made to all different types of sizes, what your preference is. Some, I see some traps got three funnels, you know. So the crawfish goes in here, but he can't get back up. And that's it. It's and pretty I, simple. And you got to set them funnels right now because if you don't have them, if you have them too wide, they're going to crawl out of there. When you, They'll see you coming to run that line and they'll shoot out of there. And they'll rob you blind with your bait. All right, let's see. Yeah, we got a few. Check that out. Man, that is awesome. Crawfishy. That's only the third trap. Oh. I know. They're starting to pick back up, brother. They starting right. to pick back up. So they all just fall through. Didn't have none at the top. All right, and then you just do your death. You throw your bait off. Yeah, but see them catfish heads. I keep them in there because they attract. Okay. To them. You want to bait it? 
Yeah, I'll do it. Go ahead. Put that catfish. Okay. I'll put right. about three of them blocks and one pogey, and I'm going to go okay. grab the next one. All right. Catfish in. Three blocks. One, two, three. And a pogey. And then we roll that. I hear them in this one. Oh, I like that sound. I didn't. I didn't hit this. I didn't hit that one yet. No, that one I, I checked it around. Okay. But I put another one somewhere. I moved yesterday. I'm just trying to remember what I did. Yeah, I like that sound. You pull it up and you hear crack, 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 crack. Ah, good stuff, my man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Crawfishy. Yeah, I hear a little crawfishy. Yeah, like you said, man, another couple of weeks. Golly, these guys will be so big. I mean, look up look at the size of this one. Oh yeah, dude, they're yeah. growing, dude. Look at the size of that. I'm telling you, man. That dude, another two weeks, we're gonna have nothing but big. Nothing but Set them on in. Gotta give them room to crawl up to the top here so they don't drown. So you want something sticking out the water. Oh yeah, we got a few baby. Okay. When they all start to get big, that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. A little bit? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, what I like about this, too, is you're not in the boat. You're walking around, getting some exercise, yep. getting some fresh air. Dude, oh, we yeah. got, I mean, it's getting there. Oh, yeah, it's getting there. And I think we only ran like 9, 10 traps so far. Still got 35 to go. Right next, not even five feet away. Wow. So, maybe, so you throwing something like that or keep that? I, I'll put that back in. Yeah, there about to say. Yeah. It. If it's if it's eating up pretty good on both sides like, like that, that, throw it away. Just okay. throw it on the ground to gotcha. keep, give that out of something to eat. Yeah. Instead of yanking my traps off. Right. you and then they got this one right here this one had about 20 oh damn you could see him yeah. look at that oh yeah oh yeah boy huh? what you like to hear man tick, 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 tick. I'm ticking in the trap. I love it when it gets like that, man. You're getting up a better now every day. Right. Oh, 
left of the little one. You look, jeez, he's gonna kill it, bro. Look at that soccer, bro. <laughs> that soccer is full, bro. It's gotta be this tree, huh? I don't know what it is, Buck, but that's a short, little different mesh type trap. Wow. I mean, look at it, bro. Kind of move them around, but boy, you the sawgrass is unbelievable, bro. They catch the heck, they, get, they bite so much better than sawgrass. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So you got this stuff here. Okay, this is an old canal, man-made canal. And this water hyacinth is an invasive plant that came in and it covers the entire surface of the canal. And it could go for miles like that. Now, if you get a hard freeze in the winter, it'll kill this stuff off. If not, in the spring like we have, we even had a hard freeze. I'm sorry, I take that back. We had a hard freeze this winter. It still wasn't enough to kill it. So here is the spring and this stuff is just chock-a-block. But if you lift it up and you see all that under there, that's what those crawfish like. They like all that stuff that hangs down in the water under there. So Ronnie sets his traps and holes and the crawfish come from areas to get to the trap there. You have the sawgrass here. It has a real hard root system down there. And his crawfish probably like to hang out around that root system down there. So he's saying when he puts the traps in there, they tend to do really well. All right. See this guy back in here. Let's see. Got a couple. So this is the one he said has been the best trap. It's been the money go get it here, Buck. <laughs> Look at the crawfish in that thing. That's bad too, because I had much bait yesterday. But dude, this trap here, I don't know why it sucker catches. Maybe it's because that drainage canal comes out to it. I don't know. But boy, if they all caught like this, we'd have sacks. Yeah. We got about 20 pounds, which really isn't bad considering that there was a cold front that we're coming up off of. Once it stays consistently warm for a few days, these traps should catch really good. But really, it's about the experience. It's about getting out during the spring, walking around, getting some fresh air, and doing it yourself. So when you go home and boil them yourself, you know you caught them. Perfect thing to take the kids to do. They can run around, help you pull up traps, help you bait traps. Thanks, Captain Ronnie, for having me along. I hope I was a good little helper. Now let's get cooking. All right, now comes the fun part, time to start boiling. Now you could talk to 10 different people and they'll tell you 20 different ways to boil crawfish. So what I'm gonna show you is kind of the quickest, easiest way that I do it. I don't use a lot of ingredients. I kind of let my seasonings do the talking. So first tip, rather than filling your pot up all the way and letting your burner try to bring it up to temp, what we're gonna do is start off with about an inch of water, let that come to a boil, then leave the hose on a slow trickle, and then let it come up boiling as the pot fills. So what I'm gonna do is, if your pot has handles, you come in, and you just wanna get to where your hose kinda hangs over. Like so. If you fill your pot up and then light everything and try to bring it up to temperature, it's gonna take forever for it to get to a rolling boil. This way, as soon as it gets to the level that you want, pull the hose out, drop your seasonings, and you're ready to boil. All right, so I've got about an inch of water on the bottom. So now I'm gonna go ahead and light my burner. Now with your burner, you may have a cover on the part where the flame comes out. You wanna leave that completely open. So your burner should look like that, not with a cover on top. I'm also gonna open the propane tank pretty wide open. I mean, you want that flame to really be getting after it. All right, so as you can hear, that flame's going pretty good. That's what you're looking for. All right, so your hose should be completely turned off. Let your inch of water come up to a boil. Once it starts boiling, you'll let it trickle out. If you notice your water rising up and it's not boiling, you need to slow down your trickle on the hose. All right, I'm pretty close to a good boil going. I'm gonna stir it just a little bit and that helps to spread your heat around a little bit better. So now my one inch of water is to a rolling boil, so I'm letting my hose trickle. Less is more here. Don't get overexcited and try to do too much. 
because your burner won't be able to keep up. So just monitor it closely, and if your burner's not keeping up, slow your trickle down a little bit more. All right, I got my water up to the level I wanted, which was about a third of the pot. We got 20 pounds of crawfish, so you don't need to go to the full half. Now, I'm using Louisiana Fish Fry Products Crawfish Boil, and if you look on the back of the bag, they'll tell you how much of the bag to use per pound of crawfish. So this entire bag would boil 45 pounds. We have about 20 somewhere in there, so I'm gonna use about half the bag. So I also like to add some liquid crawfish boil as well. Now this stuff, you don't need much of it. A little bit goes a long way. Now in a full sack, 30 to 40 pounds, I'd add about probably a quarter of this. So I'm really just gonna add a couple capfuls here. And that's it, don't need to go too much of this stuff. So I like to do my potatoes first, get those done, and then get them out and get them into a cooler so they stay hot. So we're gonna do one sack of potatoes. I use the red potatoes just cause that's kind of traditional. Golden potatoes are awesome though. All right, put the cover on. I'm gonna let the potatoes go for about 15 minutes, then I'll start checking them. You just want them to get a little bit soft. All right, my potatoes have been going about 20 minutes now. I'm gonna pull them out, get ready to drop them crawfish. All right, so as I mentioned before, if you talk to 10 different people about how to boil crawfish, they'll tell you 20 different ways. So if you noticed, I didn't add any onions or garlic to mine. The reason I don't do that is I don't find it's necessary. A lot of that stuff is in your seasoning packet already. So what you wind up doing, in my opinion, is adding a lot to the pot that doesn't ultimately affect the end flavor. So I'm saving a little bit of money and a little bit of time not having to chop that stuff. Now one thing that does help your flavor along is citrus. And you'll see a lot of people chop lemons and put lemons in there. I don't do that. I get the orange juice and I add that. So I'm gonna add a gallon and a half of orange juice. And what this does too, since I'm adding a gallon and a half of orange juice and a half a gallon of pineapple juice, you don't need to add as much water. You cut your water down a little bit if you're gonna try this. And we'll go with our half gallon. And our pineapple juice. And another reason I like to use juice rather than the actual citrus fruit itself when you're eating crawfish, it's like you suck the head, there's juice everywhere. And I just find using the juice, it tends to even help the flavor along and get on your fingers and it gets everywhere. So we got our juice in, I'm gonna crank the heat back up, get this back to a rolling boil, and then we'll be ready to drop our crawfish. All right, now we're back to a good rolling boil after we add our juices, it's time to drop the crawfish in. Thank you brothers for your sacrifice, we appreciate it. All right, so what you wanna do here is, you got your crawfish in, we wanna boil them for anywhere from about eight to 15 minutes. No longer than 15 minutes though. I try to stay around 10. You also wanna get you a paddle or a big spoon and kind of mix them around. Get them moving in there. Get the guys that are on the bottom, get them to the top. So like I said, I'm gonna let them roll at a boil for about 10 minutes. Then we wanna shut that heat off and start trying to cool it down and let them soak. The soak is the most important part of doing this. That's where your flavors get to really know the crawfish and get some time to sit in there and get settled. We'll go with our lid back on to try and trap some heat in there and we'll let them boil about 10 minutes. All right, my crawfish have cooked for about 10 minutes. It took them a little bit over five minutes to get to a rolling boil. And that just all kind of depends on your burner. Most of us have single burners. Some days it's windy. So I try to gauge, you know, uh, how long it takes it to get to a, back to a rolling boil once you drop the crawfish. Once and if it does get back to a rolling boil, you really don't need to go any more than five minutes. So I'm gonna cut it off. Now my flame is completely gone. I'm gonna pull my lid off. 
And so a lot of times at the crawfish boil, you see corn and potatoes. Now, if you don't have frozen corn like I have, you would have put your corn in with the potatoes. At this point, I like to do frozen corn because I'm trying to bring that temperature back down as quickly as I can. I don't want them to really cook any longer. I just want them to soak. So I use frozen corn for this part to bring that temperature back down. I also got my mushrooms and I threw them in the freezer as well. I'm going to drop them in, let them soak. Now you see some people will use ice at this part. Ice is fine as long as you take into consideration your beginning water. So in other words, if you like to use about a half a pot of water to boil your crawfish in, cut that down a little bit and account for your ice at the end. Your ice, your frozen corn, your frozen mushrooms, all you're trying to do at this point is bring that temperature back down and give those crawfish a chance to soak without continuing to cook. You'll even see some people hose down the pot and do all that. That's all fine and good. I stick with the frozen corn because that's what works for me. So we'll get everybody moved around in there. I love that sound. You know, the only thing better than the sound of those crawfish moving around in that trap might be those crawfish moving around in that pot when you stir it. All right, so that's it. Now it's just the soak. Now how long you soak it just depends on how spicy you want it to be or how long you boiled it for. The best thing you can do here is let it go for about five minutes, pull one out, check it. Let it go another five minutes, pull one out, check it. There's really no wrong way to do this part as long as you didn't overcook them in the boiling process. All right, so they've been soaking about 15 minutes, just long enough to enjoy a cold beer, honestly. So let's pull them up. Now this particular pot has the little kickstand, so we're gonna kick it and we just want to let them drain. This is when people start kind of coming and seeing what you got. Just be patient. If you're the ball master, everybody's there to have a good time. Enjoy it. All right, and there it is. I mean, these things have become like Bayou Gold here recently in the last few years. Highly sought after. Now you saw how to catch them. Now you saw how to cook them. So please, please, please subscribe. We got plenty more coming this spring. We're gonna do a lot more cooking. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Captain Ronnie from Swamp People. Go check him out on History Channel. Like this video, click the notification bell down below so you know we put out a new one, and we'll see y'all soon.